This is actually a huge, huge issue. It's because your thyroid hormone that you get in your medication has to be converted. If you still have symptoms, really pay attention to the information in this video. Dr. Richard L. Robles and today I'm going to talk to you about another one of the deal breakers uh, to getting rid of or preventing thyroid symptoms. So if you have uh, thyroid symptoms but your lab tests are normal and you're taking your medication as uh, prescribed, you need to pay attention to the information in this video and watch my other deal breaker videos as well. Um, if you'd like to, you can follow along on my website, uh, myhealthmanual.com. Go to the tools and resources section and look at functional lab analysis and that will give you the chart that I'm using in this video. Um, that's on my book's website, The Path to Health and Manual for Proper Care of the Human Body. So let's get into this. Um, this video, this deal breaker, it has to do with liver health. How do we identify liver health uh, on a lab test and what can, we, what, we, what can we do with that information to really help us make changes and improve the function of our body? So there are a few markers that we're going to look at. Um, the first will, do, will have to do directly with the liver. Uh, this is going to be like your alkaline phosphatase your AST and your ALT. You'll see these identified on your lab panel. Um, just acquire your lab work from your endocrinologist, your family practice physician, your chiropractor, your naturopath, whoever it is that's helping you manage your health and has ordered your labs. Get that lab work and look at it uh, with the criteria that I'm giving you and then talk to your doctor about things that you can do to change. Contact me to make some of those changes or um, you know, take some of the advice that I give you and, and start to implement some of those things on your own. So the alkaline phosphatase should be between 27 and 90. If it's outside of that range, then we start to suspect that there's some type of problem um, with your, the health of your liver. Typically what you can see is that it's uh, over 90. When your alkaline phosphatase is over 90, then we might suspect that there's um, some type of uh, chronic irritation to your liver. That can be from persistent high blood sugar. Um, it can be from actual damage to your liver. There's a number of the autoimmunity. There are a number of things that can cause that ALT, I'm sorry, the alkaline phosphatase to go up. The other two markers, your AST and your ALT, both of those markers should have a range of between 10 to 26. If either of those markers are out of that range, then this is what you need to think about. Uh, the AST or the ALT less than 10, then we're starting to worry about some type of issue with B6, uh, meaning that it's probably deficient in your diet. One of the best ways to address liver health um, when you have deficiencies is to eat things that have liver in them. Not everybody likes to do that, um, but there are supplements that uh, are you know, extracts from liver and they're really good uh, B6 supplements. Um, you want to watch the type of B6 supplement that you get. Um, P5P tends to be a pretty good one, but you know, those are things that you can go to my, my, uh, my, my online store, holisticneeds.com. Uh, if you're a patient of mine and you probably have a good idea of what the recommendations are for, um, for that. But uh, if your AST or your ALT is over 26, then we're starting to look at, again, some type of stress, chronic stress that's impacting the liver. How does this affect your thyroid? When your liver, well, first you need to know that uh, your thyroid produces mainly T4. This T4 has to be con uh, converted into T3. The conversion primarily happens in the liver, about 60% of it. So your liver health is vital to making sure that you don't have thyroid symptoms. Because you can take your thyroid medication, Synthroid, Levothyroxine, or whatever the case may be, which is typically a T4, but your body still needs to convert that T4 into T3. And that's where the problem comes in. If your liver is not healthy, if you're not doing things to promote the health of your liver, then you can expect that there's going to be some type of... Uh, lack of efficiency in converting your T4 into T3. Okay, So liver health is super important. Uh, if you see those markers are starting to go outside of the range that I just gave you, higher than 90, higher than 26, higher than uh, 26 for either the AST or the ALT, then you really need to make sure that you're doing things to help your liver function better. And we'll talk about some of those things here. Um, after we get, get through the next few markers, which are your protein, albumin, and your globulin. Uh, these are all, so your total protein is basically a combination of your albumin and your globulin. It's measured uh, in your standard like Chem 14 blood panel, your metabolic panel. Um, you'll 
if your protein is between 6.9 and 7.4, that's what we want to see. If it's outside of that range, then there tends to be a pH issue or a stomach acid issue in the body. Um, the albumin should be between 4 and 5, and your globulin should be between 2.4 and 2.8. If your albumin is outside of that range, high or low, again, we suspect that there's some type of issue with like stomach acid production, or um, there could be a decrease in the av availability of it. Remember, albumin helps transport things in your body, so it's extremely important that that stay in the, in the proper range for you. Um, globulin, if it's lower than 2.4, then we tend to suspect um, low stomach acid. If it's higher than 2.8, then we may be concerned with something that's impacting the immune system, autoimmunity um, in particular related to the bladder. Um, but autoimmunity tends to raise, uh, and, and other types of immune dysfunction tend to raise the globulin level. There's important immune proteins called immunoglobulins that protect all of your saliva secreting areas, your mucus secreting areas. Um, there's some that manage the immunoglobulins that manage like your your response to peanuts and other types of things that cause a systemic immune reaction. And then you have other immunoglobulins that regulate your delayed immune response. So of course like viruses, food sensitivities, food allergies, all of those things have an impact on the globulins in your body and can start to drive those up. Um, but these, these proteins, uh, they tend to be a marker related to pH and stress on the body. You can have stress in your body that's impacting the liver and then alters these proteins as well. Um, so what do we do about this stuff? Number one, if we see that your proteins are off, then uh, we need to make sure that we're ma managing stress. Uh, in another video I talk about, you know, this fight or flight and rest and digest system, sympathetic versus parasympathetic. If your body's under stress, then it tends to underproduce stomach acid. That underproduction of stomach acid will have a negative impact on your proteins. Um, these markers related to your liver, the alkaline phosphatase, the AST, and the ALT, um, if, we, if they're elevated and we suspect that there's some type of chronic stress in the liver, we need to figure out what that is. In general, uh, drinking too much alcohol, um, having uh, elevations in your blood sugar, hyperglycemia, uh, or having insulin resistance, diabetes, prediabetes, those are things that tend to really stress your liver. Um, aside from other things that you know, are going to be less common, like toxins that come into the body that have to be digested in your liver that cause stress, uh, chronic use of uh, Tylenol and um, ibuprofen, those things stress the liver as well. So if you take those things, you need to make sure that uh, you're not taking them too often because it will negatively impact uh, the ability of your liver to be able to function uh, well enough to convert your T4 and T3 optimally. Alright, so take care of your liver. That's the key point in this. Use the markers that I showed you to help you, you know, have a better understanding of how that, uh, how, whether or not you're actually doing the things uh, to promote liver health or if it's starting to become dysfunctional and having a negative impact on your ability to turn T4 to T3 and then you're seeing that you have thyroid symptoms even though you're taking the medication as prescribed by your doctor. This is actually a huge, huge issue it's because your thyroid hormone that you get in your medication has to be converted if you still have symptoms, really pay attention to the information in this video. Address the blood sugar issues because that's really going to drive the stress on your liver. Eating too little food, being hypoglycemic, your liver is the organ that has to respond to that and make new sugar or take sugar out of storage. All of that is stressful on your liver. So make sure you manage your blood sugar to improve your liver health. And if there's anything else that's going on, you know, talk to your doctor about that. I hope this information helps you get on your path to health. I'm Dr. Richard L. Robles. Thank you.